My name is DJ Arwana, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to make your own MIDI foot controller with Arduino. Control guitar rig, Ableton Live, whatever you want. So without wasting any time, just get right into it and uh, right into the MIDI box. Uh, as you can see, there's the uh, Arduino here. That's powering everything. And then inside we've got some buttons, switches, the selector switch here, um, which is gonna allow us to select banks. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to build one of these, how to program the Arduino, and uh, how to get it running uh, inside your computer and inside your DAW. Okay, so now we're taking a look at my wonderful wiring diagram that I made for you guys in paint. You can see that it's based on an Arduino Uno. I know a Mega and an Uno will work right now off the top because I've used them. Um, four momentary push buttons. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. There's also four stomp box switches I've used. You don't have to use them. Those are just what I had. Uh, you can really use anything that you want. You'd have to change the code a little bit. I've programmed these to send a quick note on, note off. Um, and that uh, allows me to control most things uh, that I need to control. Um, there's also an LED that simply used as an indicator that it's plugged in and receiving power. Um, and then I guess the five-way selector switch is worth talking about. Um, I've soldered four resistors in there, 100 ohms each, between each of the five legs of that selector switch. And then I'm taking my output actually from the common leg of the switch and then the five volts is gonna go in to pin one and pin five is gonna be grounded. So what I've essentially done is created a, a stepped potentiometer, you might say, with five discrete steps. And that allows me to take advantage of only using one analog pin to uh, read the state of that, that switch. So save some pins and uh, some wiring headache. Um, if you're good with soldering, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Okay, so now we're just going to take a quick look at this code. Uh, I'm going to try to run through it just quickly for you so that you have some idea what it means if you don't. Uh, I mean, if you don't know programming, then this is going to be pretty dry for you. You might want to just skip ahead. Uh, but um, if you're interested, I'm actually going to go through it now. So I'm only using one library, no MIDI libraries, just the easy button library. Uh, and that's just a deal with buttons easily, as I've notated here. Um, so we've set up all the digital pins uh, and uh, defined the outputs uh, for each button. Um, I've assigned a CC value to each button. Now, um, I experimented with using note values and CC values, um, and what I found was that uh, the note values were interfering with um, my APC Mini, and it was ding a signal when I didn't want it to get a signal um, and so I am s I switched to using CC values which eliminated that problem but also created a new problem in that um, I can't use the buttons now to select uh, they can turn effects on and off um, I have to hold the button down to continuously send the controller message so I'm gonna have to rework the code a little bit I'm gonna incorporate both I might put a switch in or something so I can switch back and forth or, or what have you, but we'll see. Or maybe I'll make some of the banks, uh, that's actually a good idea. I'll make some of the banks CC and some of the banks note values, and I, I'll have the option to do either. Um, anyways, moving on in this code, um, right here we are defining some MIDI constants. So this is just a constant, this is for note on and note off. This 180 means basically this in binary, which uh, is the continuous controller command for channel 5. Note value, this is just um, a variable that's going to hold our button press value, so these numbers here, whichever one is, is pressed. This is obviously the pin, uh, the pin 13 is going to be for the LED, it's just an indicator to show that it's on and running and it's made it into the loop, so it's working. So this is our analog input and it's defined for the for the rotary switch. I've explained the rotary switch before, but I, I, I notated it here too, so you can read that. Once again, we've made it into a potentiometer, stepped potentiometer in this case. So yeah, that's all the setup, uh, and then we head into the main loop. So we're turning the pin on to the LED. Yay, we made it this far. The program is running. And then we're gonna take a look 
right away at that five position rotary switch and see which position it's in. Now, um, the output of the five volts is gonna get uh, scaled in the um, ADC of the Arduino to a value between zero and uh, 1023. And so I didn't do any math here. I actually used my multimeter to read the resistance values at each position of the switch. And these were the values the Arduino was giving right here. And so those are my switch values. They may drift over time and then my program's not gonna work. It's gonna not work at all probably, or at least in those positions. So I'm gonna have to rewrite this. I, this is basic code I'm gonna use have to take a look at condensing it obviously and stuff as you will see um, like this could easily probably be four loops and stuff but I, it is what it is right now I, I was learning as I did this so so then uh, as you turn the switch it's going to subtract eight from your uh, press number value so it's gonna give a different CC value or note value depending on what you choose to use I'm using CC like I said here that's that so it does that all the way for every position on the switch and then it says handle the MIDI so then I've got a subroutine here outside of the main routine to handle MIDI and so the first thing in the subroutine is we have to call each of these loops this is just an easy button thing um, it's to make the it's to make the library work so without getting into too much detail just you have to do that so just do it um, button state so that's the uh, the state of all the eight buttons and then it's just a bunch of string of if statements saying if button one is released, make the make the value equal to whatever the press value is, depending on which switch state it's in, and then handle the node on and off, which are two other separate subroutines. And then it does that for every button. So those are the switches. Like I said uh, earlier, they just send a node on off really quickly like that. So if I wanted to make this work for CC, like I said, I would literally just swap this so I would get rid of this here and move it down to the uh, uh, I would move it down to sorry this is released so I get rid of this and then when it's pressed I would get rid of this and it would work with the CC for the buttons well, I might actually just try that why don't we so I'm gonna get rid of this one move that off so when it's pressed it's on compile it's going to upload it is going to compile eh? yeah it's going to compile anyways um, it does this for all the buttons all the way to eight um, and then we have to reset all the values so that we can check the button push the button push the button push again so and then here's our other two subroutines I mentioned uh, the void handle note on and handle note off it's just sending the control value what channel um, it's sending the CC value like I said it says no value it's a CC value now actually and, and then uh, it's sending max velocity and min velocity or max max uh, control parameter and minimum control parameter however you want to say that so yeah that's a lot of fun who through that okay so moving on so the final two pieces of software that you're gonna need to make this work are uh, two free applications. One's called Loop MIDI, and uh, Loop MIDI is essentially, uh, it's gonna set up a virtual MIDI port that uh, your software, like your DAW, is gonna be able to communicate with. So like when you'd plug in a MIDI device and it would come up in your DAW's preferences to set up, uh, when you plug your MIDI controller in, it will say Loop MIDI in the preferences, and that's what you're gonna set up. Um, and Loop MIDI essentially just runs in the background. And then the second piece of software you need is Hairless MIDI Serial Bridge. And they're both free. Hairless here, you're going to go to the Softpedia site and you're going to download uh, Hairless right here and just install it. The regular settings, um, this advanced settings, I don't think I touched anything in here. That's just everything the way that it was. Um, and then you, to add a port, you just click this little plus. It's going to add a port. And that's going to be a new port you can select. And then the second thing is the hairless. So basically, when you uh, 
you're going to want to set the preferences here, um, which is going to make, uh, which is where you want to set your baud rate to make sure it matches what you uh, set in your program and your Arduino program. And then you're going to want to select the port that your device is on, and you're going to want to select loop MIDI port for the MIDI out. I'm, I'm not doing MIDI in with this, so I don't select the MIDI in. And then uh, when I s enable the serial to MIDI bridge, if I have the right port selected, oops, come on, there it is. You can see it's communicating with hairless. And hairless is going to send, uh, it's going to take this information and send it through loop MIDI to your DAW. Okay, so here we are in Ableton, and uh, I just want to show you quickly um, how to set this up. So first of all, I've got hairless MIDI running here. You can see, so when I hit buttons, you'll be able to see the action that they do. I've already got some stuff mapped, but I do want to show you. Here we go. So there's the MIDI settings. So you go into your preferences, push control comma, or just go into the, uh, the menu at the top. You can see that I have a loop MIDI port right here that we set up earlier. Hairless is feeding into the loop MIDI port, which is recognized by Ableton. I've got it all set up here. Basically what I've set up is because I like to do looping and I like to have multiple tracks, I've, I've uh, pushed control M. So as you can see here, I've mapped both the track selector and the record arm button to the stomp box buttons. And I've mapped the uh, multi-purpose transport button in the looper to the corresponding red button. And you can see that I have full control. I can select tracks, they come up armed. I can start a looper. And I can select another one. I can get that loop going. Now we have two loops going. If I click it twice, it will disarm the track so that I don't have to have it armed. Let's get another loop going. Maybe you want to stop that loop. So you already you can see uh, your possibilities for controlling something like this are pretty um, unlimited, really. Um, so there it is. The MIDI foot controller with Arduino. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you like this, please do like, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to plan on doing some more videos like this. I do have a little surprise. Because what goes better with a foot controller like the one we just made than an expression pedal? Possibly a crybaby with a, a Arduino Uno inside of it. Oh, expression pedal. Look at that, it's lit up. It's USB. So stay tuned next time and we'll build one of these.